Hi everybody. Welcome to this overstuffed house. My name is Nancy. I have inherited three estates and they're all in the house now. One big uh, 1911 10 room house. <laughs> so I tend to have quite the eclectic mix and I'm thrilled to be part of one of Patrick's trusty huckster drop sales again. I hope you guys have had fun with all the others, and I know you're coming to me from Mimi's Treasure Cottage. And after me, you'll be just heading right up I-95 here in, Phil in Pennsylvania, because you're going to be heading from Chester, where I'm at, up to Scott of the Old Curiosity Shop. And he's right in Philly, right in the heart of Philadelphia. So let's get started with this lovely little thing. She is a frozen Charlotte, but she has the fun of being in a little sailor outfit. I also know she is probably from the 1930s. She was one of the things that was in my great aunt's little curio cabinet that she had little prized little uh, porcelain things in them. Most of them were made in Japan and this one is. It is marked Japan right on the bottom and most of these things had been little prizes at the boardwalk or at little fairs in the neighborhood in, in Norwood, PA, and in the surrounding county. And this was one of hers, and it is just a lovely little thing. You can see it has the flap on the back for the sailor outfit, and it has a lot of good coloring for the hair. There is a little gold line right there, so I think at some point it might have had gold lines down this crease line of the pants. And that, of course, has worn off where you would pick it up. But it still has all the paint on the shoes and the hair and the little bow. It's a lovely little thing. She is just about three and three quarter inches tall. She doesn't have any cracks or chips to her. And she is going to be $8 and is number 38. She's $8 and number 38 for the little frozen Charlotte sailor girl. Next we get to a fun one. Now it's going to be kind of hard to see but these are etched. They are a pink glass, a pale pink but they are pink and between the white and the light I cannot get that pink to show up. They have green at the bottom now these are Depression Era goblets. I just have the two. There's no chips or cracks. Now these I was able to identify. These are Louis Weston. It's called Diamond Optic Watermelon Glass. The reason they're watermelon glass is because that was something from the 30s where they would use green and pink for the glass and Let's have some fun here. Ready? They glow. And that's usually what happens. It's just the green that glows. So they are um, from, these would have been floral etched diamond optic made by Louis Weston. They were made in West Virginia and they are made, only were made between 1930 and 1939. So you have a very limited time frame that these guys were made in. Now, I think you, yeah, it's strobing here. There we go. Even with the light on of the overhead for the shadow box here, you can still see that it, it definitely has the uranium glass there. And being that these were made only for a short time, the West End Diamond Optic Watermelon Glass is tends to be highly sought after. And these, these would be for a pair. These would be $50 and are number 69. $50 number 69 for the Louis Weston Diamond Optic Watermelon Glass. These, this wonderful pair. Now this thing is not going to let me this next piece is a wonderful early 1900s package of photographic postcards by K.F. Lutz. Now these were all made in Germany 
They are old photographs. There are 21 of them. They are all of buildings from Philadelphia. And as you can see from the cars and the long dresses on the women, this is definitely from the early 1900s. These were all of a series. And as I said, there are 21. They're in excellent shape. Now, sometimes you find they all say Philadelphia beautiful. Um, often you find these separate for sale, but I actually have a full set with the original envelope that they came in. Now it has some wear, a split there on the side and a little split up here as well. But I love that this series is called Ever Progressing. He did, he did several packages of Philadelphia Beautiful, but this particular one was all about progressing in the city. And they are all in excellent shape. Uh, this is the approach to the Delaware River Bridge. I love that skyline there. Bet half those buildings are gone now. But they do say, if it will focus, which it doesn't want to, but it does say made in Germany. And that they are original photography photographed and published by K.F. Lutz of Philadelphia. And these are, now remember there's 21 of them and it's rare to find this many together or in the original package that it came in. But this is going to be $20, $20 and it's number 23. And you get 21 vintage cards. This is a wonderful matte framed piece. It is signed by the artist. You can see the signature there. It is Hu Ten Chang. Um, it is a dragon silhouette. It is black paper. It is signed. I do not have the artist information with it. There was nothing on the back of this. This is a uh, plastic overcoating to keep it safe. So it basically feels like a thin plastic sheet. And they were often sold like this from uh, art galleries. And he was popular from about 1970 to 1989 here in the United States. And he has got several of these online. You can see other wonderful works of his, but this is a fun dragon. And this one is $10 for the silhouette. $10, number 74. Okay, I have a few other little tinies here. This is a magnet, but it's quite a fun little thing. Um, great for use in an assemblage if you wanted to, or if you wanted to have it on your refrigerator, your file cabinet. This is a wonderful little bone china, little iron. Does have the little sticker saying bone china Japan. There we go. All this lovely little hand-painted rose on it. Really cute little thing. Sometimes you can get really nice tiny dried flowers and make them a lovely little arrangement. This little cutie, isn't she so pretty in her yellow dress? She is made in occupied Japan. And they are all fairly small. If you can see, get a rough idea there. Now, for the magnet. The magnet is three dollars and is number 25. The iron is four dollars, number 16. And the made in occupied Japan, she is eight dollars for this lovely little book reading angel. Made in occupied Japan, she is eight dollars and she is number 86. Next, we have this lovely amber glass. It does have a large pontal on the bottom. 
I did not find any kind of maker signature on this at all. So I do not know who made it. Being here on the East Coast, it could have been Blanco. It could have been um, something from the Wheaton Village. I don't know, but it is in lovely shape. I sold one not that long ago that didn't have the same darkness of the handle. But this is just lovely. It has no chips or cracks. As you can see, it's just over five inches tall. And about four and a half for the width. And this lovely piece, you can see the wonderful caramel coloring to it when it's up against the white. But this lovely piece is $12 and is number 51. $12 number 51. Now I have these lovely little pieces and they are not a pair. You can see that this is a tiny little demitasse cup. Perhaps it was from a child set at some point, but the delicacy of the hand painting on this is just gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful hand painted work. There's no maker's mark, as you can see, there is a little flea bite there and a little flea bite there, but it is a wonderful little piece that just is so darling for spring. And I thought that would be a sweet thing to put up. Um, that is $4. It is number 10. It's $4. It's number 10. And then I have this lovely piece in the back. Now, I do not have the matching cup because, as we all know, when it has this, there's usually a cup that goes with it, and it's meant to be a little snack tray. But I've found these extremely useful in that if you do any kind of watercolor painting, it's helpful to use it. You can use them as a palette, and then, of course, it washes right off and you have a little spot to put your little cup with water. Um, I've also had fun using these for just as little snack things, putting little petty fours or little tarts on them and serving them that way. When you have someone over for lunch to have a nice little sweet dessert, uh, they just make a great background too because you can stand them on end and then you have things standing in front of them. It can, can give such a pretty little background to a little display. So this one, now the bottom part here, this is not glazed and there's no maker's mark. I have not been able to identify who, but it is lovely and it seems to all be hand painted. We can get in close. You can see the gilding is really nicely done, but it all does seem to be by hand. And this lovely little piece is $5. Five dollars, number 62. Now, something else I have no shortage around here of is books. Because so I did inherit a very large book collection, as well as I have my own big collection. So, in a lot of my sales, uh, you will see books. This is a wonderful For Love of Angels book. And... You can tell the, the gold paging, man, it takes a fingerprint really fast. But the artwork, it's an Andrews and McNeil Publishing Company, and the artwork inside is just lovely. This book is from 1997. There is no writing. There's no creases. There's no tears. Those are fairies. Fairies don't have feathers. Fairies have all kinds of insect wings. Angels have feathers. But it's such great artwork. 
and you can enjoy it for the artwork. Oh, hello. What are you doing in there? Well, I wonder how old that is. So <laughs> the only flaw really is the fingerprinting that, that uh, has been on this gold. Now, I know when that stuff's brand new, it tends to do that. So you have this wonderful angel book. And the angel book is seven dollars seven dollars number 56 I also tend to find vintage magazines these are model railroader there are two I have the October 1968 edition and the November 1968 edition and the fun part of these is that they really do have if you like your model trains they have all kinds of tips and tricks and ways to identify and ways to repair and that's something you just don't see too much of anymore ways to repair the old sets they also have some <laughs> dremels don't look like that anymore they also have some interesting ads so now this one does have a tear at the top they are a little worn um, but these had been my grandfather's and he was gone before I was even born <laughs> but lead us to say there's a lot of stuff like that here so these are for the pair of them it will be eight dollars so it would be four dollars for each one but you're getting the pair it is eight dollars for the two vintage model railroader magazines eight dollars number 17 There's also a dearth of cookbooks that I haven't even started going through it yet. Um, but this is the Williamsburg cookbook, traditional and contemporary recipes adapted from taverns inns and inns of colonial Williamsburg. Um, it's in great shape and full of wonderful stuff. It is, I'm not known for my cooking. I'd rather bake. Um, this is updated and enlarged from 1975, and it is in very good shape. There's no creases. I've not found any stains or writing in it. It's a paperback, but the side binding, there's not even a crease in that. So I don't think it was ever really read. So this is $6 for the Williamsburg cookbook. $6, number 19. Being from a family of crafters, there's also things like this that pop up. Early American cut and use stencils. 54 full-size stencils printed on durable stencil paper. Not a one has been used. Now the fun part of when you find a stencil book is you can use it as a stencil on anything. And you can use fabric paints now. So you can make great pillows with these as well. Now this particular book, this is going to be $5, and it's number 27. $5, number 27. And then I have this needle weaving as embroidery. Again, no creases. I don't think my grandmother ever actually used it. So there's a lot of things in here as well including something for knots and hoops that she put tucked in there. So I will leave that in there. This one is also going to be $5 and is number 49. And I think my camera is about full. So I will leave you with this one. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to all the channels on the list. And the next one is Scott at the Old Curiosity Shop who starts at 7.30 Eastern Time. And Scott has always got fantastic stuff, and I've never seen anybody know their Depression era and early, early, like early 1900s glass better than Scott. He is wonderful.
and I hope you enjoy the other sales. It goes all evening, and have a great time. Goodbye!